Okay, okay, thank you. The start of all of this was just doing kits, Kevin wanting to do surface mount building exercises. And we originally did a simple 80 metre SDR kit. Um, one thing BATC seems to do really well, apart from the magazines, which as an outsider, although I'm a member, but I don't do any active work, um, the magazine just looks fantastic. And also the kits you do are a real knockout and it makes it look as though what we're doing. I mean, we've a lot to learn really by looking at what you do on BATC. So I think I've probably grovelled enough on that one. But we do, but all of these, all of these kits have come out of wanting to find something buildable rather than the uh, little bits of board that Kevin gets made up to just solder things down that aren't, that don't end up in being a project. So um, this one is probably a bit on the complicated side for a weekend build. We should have had these done for July uh, for, the, for the microwave round table here. I was struggling to uh, get stuff done and the board ordered and then we happened to bump into Noel and Noel said, well, do it at this, this uh, event since it's Finningley and I failed to make it in time for this as well. So that's another connection because Noel said, well, why don't you give a talk on this? To give you an idea of what we can achieve, I mean, my interest in radio was, as a kid was really sealed because I couldn't believe that the power that you'd use on a flashlight was enough to get you all around the world. And so that carried, that kept my interest in radio going. And then when we came to these optical things, I mean, we can get 100k with this and uh, see everybody diving under the chairs, but I'm not going to blind anybody with, with this. But if you can imagine that that will get you 100k just with some, some optics. That's half a watt, half a watt red LED. And so that's really what got the optical going as an interesting thing. There are some people here who've done some optical from uh, Grimsby. Yes, they're right at the back, Grimsby. Um, and we did, a, we did a kit a couple of years ago, or more than that, that was our first attempt at a kit, which was this one here. It's all baseband, so we're doing the opposite of what you're doing. So we're using the minimum bandwidth because, as I can show later, bandwidth and range go hand in hand. So the minute you want to do optical, I know somebody's been doing some optical work, I've been told. I'd love to know what sort of distance you're getting with, with that. That's pretty good, yeah, that's amazing. Because when you think with this, so you'll see why, as I say in a minute, once you've gone above audio range, it's all baseband. The minute you've gone to a couple of KCs, you can see the receiver sensitivity dropping down. So to, to the bandwidth that you want, I'm amazed you've got that distance. That's really interesting. But anyway, we built a kit. We had the transmitter was the red LED, and the photodiode was obviously for the receiver. But the problem was, the minute you put that behind optics, obviously the focal point was different. And we'd had this clunky arrangement where this fits in a circular tube. And you can see a, a smaller telescope there. So we just turned it 180 degrees to get you to the same focal point. But that's very, fast, that's, that's very tricky when you've got the optics set up as they are. So one of the chaps, the really active chaps up in uh, Newcastle, had been using LEDs as detectors. You'd seen that written up somewhere. And I tried to duplicate what he did over several years using the same devices. And I could never get anywhere near the sensitivity. I was always 20 dB down on an optodiode. And then one day, any LEDs I get, I tend to just check. And I got one of these Chinese LEDs and it was remarkably sensitive. And cutting a long story short, we've done some tests from the Wolds, Lincolnshire Wolds over to, how was it, Home Moss? Well, anyway, 66K path. Um, with these and it's just a sensitive with an A4 Fresnel size lens so bigger than that and this is just as sensitive as the the photo diode receiver so because that makes life easy you set up receive and it's automatically set up on transmit if there are any interesting things about that that's all there is in the receiver by the way there's nothing much uh, in there 
But the difference between what we're doing and what you're doing is where, where you using the, the detector in current mode to get the bandwidth. Ah, right, OK. But, I mean, you know, normally in fibre optics you're in current mode for the diode. Um, if this were a photodiode, we'd still be biting it because we can reduce the capacitance down a little bit. So it just lifts the frequency response a bit. The important thing to note is that we're feeding it open circuit into effect and I know from what we've got here that the input impedance up to at least a KC is about 20 mag ohms. So, you know, that's why the bandwidth is just dropping, is so narrow. And um, that's on a normal diode. Because we found that an LED, so some LEDs are really sensitive, uh, there's more self capacitance in there, so. Um, uh, the, the, the response just drop off a fair bit. But what was found was, if you reverse bias the LED to the point where it's about to break down, then the sensitivity comes right up. But I don't know the physics behind that. So that's just an observation that uh, Stuart, G-H-C-W-L, C-W... C-Y-W. Yes, yeah, sorry, C-Y-W, that's right, uh, discovered. So that's what we're, that's what we're doing here into effect just to keep the impedance high and then the op amp is going on to the negative input so it's a transconductance amplifier the idea being that we're wanting to keep the gate impedance as high as possible so the drain we don't want any signal otherwise capacitive feedback the feedback will lower the impedance so it's an interesting circuit and I still can't totally analyse how you work out what the gain is without going in on the negative input well, that works quite well. We have a little control PCB that has the TX switching as well, which you would have seen wherever I had that unit. I don't propose to talk about that because it's just audio amps and mic input and switching. But essentially that's all the receiver is. The, smart, the bias voltage I thought was going to be a challenge. The usual way is because you don't need any current is just put a load of um, long life cells in series and just use that. But I, I thought that was going to get a bit m messy. So I tried to find ways of generating minus 63 volts because that's near enough what they all seem to come out at. And I suddenly thought if we use the Colpitts oscillator and we have a small value capacitance on the live side here, ignore the detector. Then you know the voltage on this side will be higher than that side if the capacity is small, just by virtue of the Q of the crystal. So I messed around, which or bodged, whatever way you want to put it, that circuit together, and it's really reliable. I can generate about 80 volts by getting that value right. There's a reason there's a pot down, but it's not connected with this, uh, the biasing uh, and that works very reliably a little one meg ceramic resonator that Kevin has about six million of so we're not short of those um, alter the supply rail volts with a with a loop just to keep the voltage constant works a treat doesn't seem to be very temperature uh, sensitive the high, imp the, the high impedance of tens of mega ohms is a bit of a worry, just in case we get any uh, dew point problems, but so far we haven't. So I'm really pleased with that. It, it really works. So if you need anywhere up to 100 volts, just use a... And it was enough to use a quartz, um, a ceramic resonator rather than quartz, which you had plenty of. So that's made it a bit more complicated, putting that in. And that's just the overall circuit. I mean, the transmitter is just a straightforward amplifier and a, uh, not an emitter follower, a source follower, just feeding the, the lead. So that's all we're doing. I don't know how that connects in with anything that you're doing, other than it's really great to hear that you're doing what you're doing. I get, we, we gave a talk to the Linux beer hiking group 
I tend to go along to. And I was amazed, I thought that wouldn't be of interest to them, but it was amazing how many comments people came up with of things that we could do, polite things we could do with it. Um, but I don't know whether anybody has. So typically, how would you mount this phone and what lens would you use? Good question. You know I haven't prepared this, don't you? That's why you're asking me that. Um, different people have different ways of doing it. I thought the easiest way, given that on the original notion where you had a separate receiver and transmitter, it had to go in something circular. So it gets mounted in a tube. And then the original ones, we sold with these four inch lenses. <coughs> so we just put it in, in there. But of course, it doesn't really matter now. We don't have to turn it because it's the same receive and transmit focal point. There's very few of these LEDs seem to uh, be as sensitive as this one. But if I can just... I mean, you just don't seem to have much power there. I mean, I'm still knocked out that that... that, that we get a hundred... well, we got 66k with that. But the amazing thing is... Uh, Richard, who's just gone home... what's the car time? I don't know if any, any of you know him. He said, well, come up to Lincolnshire when I had the development board and try it. And, OK, I was using a... And Barry G8AGN was over in York somewhere. I had my setup like that. Richard or, had already established contact. So I took my receiver and I got there and I was already hearing... Before I ever got anywhere near the optics, I was hearing Barry at that distance. So we know it'll do 100k, which, I mean, I... I just find amazing. So the other things to do are to find an LED that's infrared, so try that out, because some of the other groups are doing infrared. And we'll go from there. Kit-wise, we've got all the problems that I wish I knew how you'd sorted out. If we build kits up here, a weekend is nowhere near long enough, I think we know that. If we let people build kits up at home, Kevin gets all the work of sorting them out. And I think it's interesting to learn from what the ACC is. So I keep, yeah, support. I keep looking at you. You, you. I like the way you'll sell built-up kits. Yeah. And I'm certainly heading that way, even though the original idea was a surface mount build exercise. But it's a difficult one, that. Yes, I mean, we want to try and get the SMG skills built up. Well, well, Actually, we, we, we take the mixed approach in okay. the, the, the really complicated board to yes. sell a built-up board. Mm. All the other boards we put out there as a challenge for people to make. Yep. And so far, it's paid off. I mean, people have had the old problem. Yeah. But I think most people have managed to get a successful board. Well, we could just do that, you see, as the yeah. kit. I yeah. think you need to work out whether you're trying to promote optical communications or trying to do SMD education. But the minute you ask why are you doing it, that's why I struggle. I never really know. <laughs> well, but anyway, that's... None of us know why we do No, that. no. <laughs> and you must want... I mean, I mean, you, know, you, get, you get going on 437 and you think, oh, this is too easy. So you go to 10 gigs and then 10 gigs isn't good enough. You have to go to 24 gigs, you know. <laughs> I think what I really like about it is, like, at the minute, 10 gig wide band is beginning to interest people again, despite what uh, people might think of the simplicity, but the price is so low. And all the kit, although the kit to do that might be expensive, to actually build something up that works just as well, if you don't mind having separate receive and transmit. How again, much would that kit be? Well, we're arguing that. I suspect Kevin wants to charge more than I do. No. <laughs> I mean, I'd be happy <laughs> sent, <laughs> <but> selling <laughs> it for £20, yeah. but... You think more than that. So we've got. We're circa 50 quid each Now, one of the things about that's a good point that you bring up. They sold the one thing about um, soldering surface mount. It's fine for all of those who are in the business because you wonder what the fuss is about because we've been used to doing it. Um, but as soon as we get people building things up, you look at the joints and you think, well, no, we should have been saying a lot more. And people do need to quickly get that experience of, of how you make a decent joint and because it never happens quickly enough. So what we were going to do with this, if we did double the price, was to throw in, I've been building these up with 
four pound USB soldering irons that are coming in from China and they are, although they're eight watts, not quite sure how you get eight watts out of a USB socket but anyway, we do and they work, I mean I built ten of these up now with the same iron so they, they last long enough for that but the real trick is using solder that's quarter of a mil diameter, that's really what it is so we're still thinking that through as you must have done as to, but I think, I think as you say, maybe the, the right idea is we stay flexible and if somebody's got an idea, can you let us, and we've got an Australian group came, a couple came over for the round table and they just want the boards, didn't really want the components but we'll send them some, let them get on with it. So I think maybe being flexible is the right way but I'm afraid we're watching you rather than you watching us because you do seem to be way ahead of us. Okay. So that was the introduction, if there's any queries or comments, particularly about what any connections are with TV, apart from the one we know, be interested to hear. Have you tried running TV through it? Well, no, because of the, the high input impedance of these receivers, it's a waste of time. The transmit is fine, you put, I mean, the lead will modulate very high, so that's fine. Yes, sorry. You could, I don't, I don't ask me how this can be done, but you could mo modify it slightly to make it almost like a TV version where you could receive and transmit without it having such a... Oh, yeah, you could do. I oh, could do. Um, it's a specialised TV version, specialised radio. Yes, you could. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you could do. I agree about that. What did you do? You did a demo two yeah. years ago. What did two you do? Two years ago, I, had, I used the, uh, the Optum Soxon yeah. fibre optic. Uh, yes. And I used those because the... And you've got low impedance out, but it's quite easy to, to utilise those. And I had TV going right way from uh, IR across the... Well, actually, I had it in red as well. Uh, and you got a reasonable distance? Well, this was just demonstrating the cross. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what I started with as well. Um, particularly as you get the heads that are integrated, the preamp is integrated with it. And I don't actually have a figure as for how less sensitive that is, but it's just more appropriate to drive them short circuit, I just take the current. Yeah. So an award for the first 10k optical? No, you've done that. You've done that, no, you can't. Uh, uh, 25k. <laughs> First 25k uh, ATV QSO, come on, Dave. <laughs> yes, sorry. If you uh, reduce the frequency of the, uh, the LED go to uh, infrared, will it in fact increase the range? Um, again, Stuart up in Newcastle, they've been doing some infrared and they reckon, well, they're getting about the same distance at night, but during the day, there's less uh, light pollution. Uh, because in effect it's a crystal set, any background light immediately knocks down the sensitivity. It kills the diode off. One, uh, but you have reminded me, because we, one thing about using the red LED or an infrared LED as a receiver, it's optically very narrow bandwidth. So you cut out a lot of, you notice this at night, you cut out a lot of mains, hum from lighting and things like that. Yes, I think it is. The infrared is, is better, yeah. So I'm still looking around. If I see a new infrared LED on eBay, I buy it and try. I've got a box full of LEDs that aren't really very good as receivers. <laughs> trying to find the useful. Is this familiar? <laughs> yes. So. Bernie, can I ask, this is, is obviously AM, isn't it? It's, it's AM. So have you, have you tried PWM and is there any advantage? Stuart has. Stuart is the guy. I mean, I feel a bit of a cheat here because Stuart's done a lot of stuff because he's able to grab people. Being an ex teacher, mm -hmm. when he wants to try something, he grabs 10 people and they all say yes. They all come fairly meekly. I can't do that. Oh, of course you did. Yes, you did that. that. Do, you've got a real good video as well, haven't you, on that? Sure. Didn't you do it? You did a talk to the Lincoln Club talking about that. But you can put SSB through. It's debatable whether SSB is really SSB when you're talking about a baseband signal. But Stuart does that, or FM of course, that's the other thing. And what they're doing is going through a mixer using an HF transceiver uh, and say a CCTV, do I mean that? No, I mean a 4.4 whatever crystal. And then going to maybe 10 kilohertz. 
So the various things you can do. I don't know anybody doing anything truly digital. Sorry, go on. What about using a laser? Well, there's a few things about that. First of all, you much more easily get locked up if you're using a laser. <laughs> uh, even if you're my age, you're looked at, well, you're looked at very strangely anyway, if you're a radio amateur. But uh, I, one of the things with a laser is, is that we're ve it's very narrow, and this is very forgiving because you can deliberately defocus when you're setting up to give you, to find the other person you would need a really good aiming system. And the other thing is, because it's coherent, you get a lot of, uh, I'm going to say speculation, that can't be the word. Scintillation. Scintillation, that's it. Oh, speculation as well, I'm afraid. I don't want to go out. And so you tend to that, you know... You, you, Yeah, but you're young enough not to have that shake, you see. So actually aiming it <laughs> spot on. <laughs> but you're right now. I mean, that's what the early stuff was done in America. If you go back 30 or 40, when well, there's a 60s, wasn't it? They got some impressive ranges. And what did you know? They've been firing, I think they've just stopped now, firing up to the moon, coming back off prisms. Is that right? So, I mean, th there's no reason why you shouldn't do that. It's harder to modulate. Yeah. So is that, yeah. shall we leave it at that? Are we good? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Right. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.